Hello and welcome to another Wolf Time Gaming video. Today I'm going to be painting up the troll because I want to try and push my boundaries a little bit and do something a bit different to what I normally um, actually paint. He's an absolutely fantastic looking sculpt. I really love how he's about to throw this little goblin or Gretchen uh, further along the field with the ball. Of course, it's for Blood Bowl uh, that we've, I've been painting up throughout this week. Comes in the uh, actual core box for the game, but you can get him separately. Though I think he's out of stock at the moment with Games Workshop. Before we get started on the painting though, as usual, let's get that kettle on. So if you've been here before you know the first thing we want to do is give your mini a really nice base coat. I've used Games Workshop Grey Sear which is a spray paint and you just spray it over the whole thing. As you can see I've already added some, uh, some sand to the bottom onto the base and I've actually sprayed after I've put this on as well. And this helps the, the actual sand um, hold the, the, the paint a little bit better and makes it look uh, all blend together a little bit more. At least that's all I've found anyway. So. Now moving on to the skin, I had a few different ideas about how I wanted to do this. I thought, do you go with a green the same as the rest of the, you know, the orcs that that he's going in their team essentially, or what do I do with the skin? So I decided in the end I wanted to go with something really fantastical, very very bright, very shiny. So I'm starting with this blue paint called Sotek Green. Now this is a, a paint that I used to use on. Uh, my Seraphon and Lizardman forces, um, but I wanted it to look really different. I took my time around the whole of the skin areas you can see here, and um, the whole of the mini, uh, all the, those areas um, that are showing skin, which is actually quite a lot on this one, have all gone being base coated with this Sotek Green. I think it's a really, really great colour. It's so bright and shines really, really nicely. Now, to highlight those areas, I'm going to use two different. Um, lighter blue paints the first being temple guard blue and this is a games workshop layer paint and again i use this in the past uh, to paint some of my lizard men um, and seraphine and uh, all i'm doing is dry brushing it onto the mini so you can see i've got a, a, like a wild wide bristled brush wipe off the majority of the paint and then go around the whole mini and picking out all those raised areas in particular i'm then doing exactly the same thing with uh baharoth blue which is an edge paint. This is really, really thin, um, and if you get too much on the brush, it can, um, you know, spread out quite a lot, and you, it sort of goes a little bit too bright. So you really do want to give it a light, dry brush. So all you do is get that this wide brush or brush, get a bit of paint on it, wipe the majority off on a piece of tissue or onto your palette or anything like that, and then go around the whole mini, picking out all the raised areas, and it starts to look really, really fantastic. You get this sort of an effect here. Now to add a little bit of shading onto this, um, I've actually gone with a, a shade paint called Co Go, excuse me, Colia Green Shade. That's C O E L I A, Green Shade. Now this is yes, it has, is a little bit green, but what what it does with this is when you put it onto the blue, it almost has it gives it like a a turquoisey effect, and it drops into the recesses really really nicely. Now I've, again, I've coated the complete model in this one going over the whole thing uh, the the whole all the the skin areas and you get this really fantastic looking skin you can see now it's really bright with the light areas look absolutely fantastic that we did before now moving on to some of the detail the first thing I'm going to be picking out is his claws on his feet and his hands and I'm going to do that with contrast black Templar now this is a paint I use all the time if you've watched any of the videos you'll know this it's sort of my go-to paint now for anything black that I want to paint um, I've gone going around the whole mini. I'm picking out all of those bits of chainmail, anything that I think is going to be metal. So you've got like his shoulder pad as well. I wanted that to be black because um, it really does stand out really nicely against the rest of the blue. Anything that he's got like a bear trap style thing around his foot, um, which I think lo looks absolutely amazing. Um, but paint that black as well, and we can highlight that with a little bit of silver paint later. Um, anything really that you're gonna you wanting to be metal would be. Uh, this is a really good paint to start with. 
Now moving on to the wooden areas of the actual miniature itself, he's got like a wooden plaque just on the front there and because we've used this um, grey sear as the base coat we can actually go with some more contrast paints and I'm using contrast wildwood to pick out all of these wooden areas as well as all the leather areas around the strapping. He's got like a um, like a bandolier style strap over his chest and, and back which is holding um, his, his armor plate on his shoulder and all those bits and pieces we can go with contrast wildwood because it's an absolutely fantastic looking um, mid sort of brown paint to add a little bit of variety to the leather and and things though what i'm doing is picking out sort of the 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 cloth around his waist with zandri dust now i could have gone with another contrast paint for this one and maybe skeleton horde or something like that but i think it was going to be a little bit too light so i wanted to go quite dark with this uh, sort of leather effect so i've gone with the, the zandri dust and when i say dark i mean dark as in a dark tan um, and this it really does stand out absolutely fantastically from the rest of the model as you can see I've also done his glove as well and all the bones around uh, are, that are hanging around his sort of bandolier too now to paint his eyes I grabbed a little bit of white paint uh, it doesn't matter what white paint you use I've used a games workshop one called Corax white and all I'm doing is using a very very small brush a really nice small brush just to pick out the center of the eye um, and this essentially adds the white to the eye. Now you could do this different colours if you want to, with it because it's a troll. But I wanted to keep it white because that's you know the sort of colour that we all know in day to day, and it looks a little bit more realistic. I thought and adds that more realism to the, this very fantastical sculpt. And to finish off the eye, all we're doing is grabbing a little bit of black paint. I'm using contrast black templar again, just to essentially paint an iris just to the centre. And all you need to do is get a tiny little bit of paint on it on your brush and just dot it just to the center of that white area and that works for eyes really well. Now we've got the eyes done, I'm just moving on to some of the uh, other smaller details around the mini. And you've got a helmet just on his left knee which I think is absolutely fantastic little detail and I'm going to paint this in a similar sort of painting style to the way we've done the Bogenhaf and Barons as well. So I'm going with the Screamer Pink uh, to actually paint the, the uh, top of the helmet. So just taking my time, it's a, a base coat you can get from Citadel, one I've had for a little while now, but it's the same colour I've used with the Barons, or, um, so it works quite well with those. And I'm also, because of it being, uh, I wanted it to be one of the Baron sort of helmets, I'm going to use a gold paint called Retributor Armour, uh, just to paint in those, uh, the details, so the metal work around the, around the helmet as you can see here. Uh, it goes on really, really well. Uh, it is good to get a um, shade over the top of this one because it can be quite bright uh, but we'll do that a little bit later on um, you can see there the, the details sort of working really really nicely the actual face uh, sort of guard I'm going to paint silver uh, along with some of the other silver effects now uh, throughout the model so you've got a little bit of chain mail um, just below the actual um, shoulder pad of, of the actual troll and also the on his right arm he's got what looks like metal it's all dented and and, and broken so I'm gonna stick a little bit of silver paint on there and also the bear trap on his, his uh, left foot and a, a little bit of detail just around the, the right foot as well you've got like a, a metal sort of ring around the right foot it works really well once you stick a little bit of this silver paint on there looks quite effective now because I thought I looked at the um, the black sort of claws and I thought they were a little bit too black so I'm just picking out a little bit of um, just adding a little bit of highlighting on those using uh, a, a bit of administratum grey which is a, a, a sort of light grey colour it's quite a nice uh, nice grey colour but all I'm doing is just adding uh, a little bit of highlighting just to the top there uh, just dry brushing that on the top to make it stand out a little bit more and make it not look completely black now on the bones obviously we put a little bit of zandri dust on there earlier to to pick out these a little bit more to make them stand out compared to the rest of the you know the tan leather work i'm going to use uh, ushabti bone uh, just to put paint this straight over the top and then when we add the shade on uh, the actual um, tan uh, leather work and the bones a little bit later on in the video you'll see that it really does show a difference um, and it, it does make them stand out as being a different material if you, you can go with these as, uh, as one material for everything but i do think it stands out uh, really really nicely so to add a little bit of shading onto the helmet now while we're, we're just waiting for that Oshabti bone to dry um, I've grabbed a little Druki Violet from uh, Citadel um, to shade paint just onto the uh, the, the uh, pink areas 
uh, just on the actual helmet which looks quite effective looks quite nice and now we're going to move on to the shade paint for all those tan areas we were just talking about a few minutes ago and I'm going to use uh, Agrax Earth Shade or I am using Agrax Earth Shade for this and you can str see straight away it adds all the detail into those recesses really nicely and also as soon as you put start putting it on the bones you can see they look a little bit more realistic it gives them a lot of depth um, instead of just that base co like base color uh, and you can especially see that around the glove as well where it drops into the recesses really really nicely um, and the the detail looks absolutely fantastic after that you can highlight it a little bit if you wanted to but there's no real need to do that now uh, all the metal work obviously I could have used Agrax Earthshade on that as well but instead I'm going with Null Oil which is the you know that classic sort of um, uh, shade that everyone kind of uses. I've used it so many times for all sorts of different things But I'm adding it onto all the metal work. So all those silver areas we painted onto the gold areas around the helmet as well um, And it, what this does is add a lot of definition to those silver areas and it, it also gives it more of a realistic silver finish as well I think it stands out really really nicely it's had a little bit of fun just in the miniature. Uh, I just grabbed a, a fine tip brush, uh, a little bit of white paint. Um, actually, I'm using the Administratum Grey, so it's not like pure bright white. And I'm just putting no feed just on the uh, on the front of the actual um, wooden sort of plaque there. I mean, it's probably supposed to be for the number, but I think this is this looks quite funny uh, when you add this in there. I think it looks quite effective just adding this on there. It adds a little bit of fun to the model. You know, it looks pretty fantastical compared to the rest. And I think it looks great when you've uh, all done. Now to, as I mentioned earlier, to, you can highlight over the top of this um, uh, shades and it will make it look a little bit even more realistic by adding that, that uh, bright paint straight back to the the tops and the raised areas and I'm specifically doing this around the uh, bones just not using no shabti bone and what this does is you know they end up with like a shaded area you end up with the shabti bone with the shade over the top of it and then you end up with the the, the highlighted area as well and it gives it a more realistic feel now essentially that's the the troll complete so now we can move on to the um, the goblin that is actually about to launch down the pitch and um, I'm starting with a uh, wag flesh for this one which is sort of a uh, dark greeny sort of, sort of colored paint it's a really really decent um, color to actually start with any goblins or any orc flesh though it is slightly different to um, what I've used for some of the orc players that will come on to in a future video so make sure you do hit that subscribe button as well so you do see the future videos because there's a few different variants of this that I'm going to going to be doing and you can see what I'm doing with this one though is dry brushing now um, a little bit of war boss green straight over the top of that wag flesh um, and this just just adds that little bit of a highlight to it to the the actual skin areas it um, picks out all the uh, raised areas really really nicely because there is quite a lot of detail in this uh, goblin that you don't want to lose really and to highlight that even more that now I've grabbed a little bit of moot green just to pick out the real raised areas now so you I, I'm, I've hardly got anything on the brush at all um, and then I just literally just touch in the tops of, like on the nose around the facial features in particular and this may, really does make it stand out quite a lot um, before we add the shade to the actual green areas anyway which I'm doing now and I'm, this time though I'm using a different shade paint this is Beltan Green uh, this has got a real sort of bright greeny sort of an effect um, in comparison to the Coley Green shade we used on the blue which was had a more dark turquoisey sort of feel once you added it to the blue I really wanted this to, to be quite bright so I went with Beltan Green because I think it it worked really really well uh, and made the, the green pop nicely um, <clears throat> compared to the rest of the, the actual miniature itself so then uh, obviously it's moving on to the, the details around the actual goblin there we've got the skin done I'm starting with the yellow paint just on his chest there with contrast it, uh, Eand and yellow. Uh, it's a really, really nice yellow contrast paint. Actually, it's so much easier than painting uh, with different yellow shades and things. I love the contrast paints now. I think they they work really, really well. And I'm also actually using it to to pick out the shoulder pad as well because we're going to be doing that throughout all the um, the the black orcs minis. We're going with a very black sort of a scheme, but with the highlights of yellow all over them, and it looks looks really, really good. Um, as I say, check out the other videos for that one. They'll be coming over the next couple of weeks. So to, to add in uh, in the browns and things, I'm using uh, Contrast Wildwood again, uh, same way as we did with the, the actual troll himself, and we're just painting all of those sort of leather areas, anything that's um, sort of fabric and things like that, sticking it all on there, and it, it kind of looks fantastic, like um, 
fantastic when it's really when it's done i think the 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 goblin looks really good there's so many details on this goblin actually that um you really do have to take your time to try and pick them all out i'm also painting the ball that he's holding to the exactly the same color now they, i did notice when i did this it blended really blended sorry blended straight into the uh, actual glove which I, I wasn't too keen on i wanted it to stand out compared to the glove itself so i grabbed a little bit more brown paint so you'll, you'll see that in a minute and then we'll uh, to highlight it and make it stand out a bit more um the black that i'm painting now i'm doing the shoes mainly because i, I wanted them to look different to the the rest of the strapping around the mini and any other metal areas any sort of plates like uh, elbow pads that sort of thing with um with the contrast black templar um it's just so it, it fits in with the rest of the foot the uh team really because we're going with that yellow and black sort of a scheme throughout really throughout the whole of the the team i'm also as you can see now picking out the little spikes on the ball as well with the the black templar um mainly because i wanted them to be silver but like i said earlier you put the silver on there straight away you, you get like this really bright sort of silver look and i wanted it to look a bit um worn so i've gone with black initially and then we can add a little bit of silver on in a while now to pick out some of the strapping uh, around the actual uh, miniature and also the ball i'm using a brown paint called mournfang brown now all i'm doing is picking out the actual leather part of the ball sort of the the actual main part of the ball i suppose and and ignoring the the recesses because they they look really really good with that um contrast wildwood and i'm also picking out all the straps around him as well so he's got some straps around his feet around the gloves as well so the gloves have stayed wildwood with the the mournfang brown over the top um just on the straps there and he he it makes it look a little bit more realistic because not everything that's brown is the same shade of brown if that makes sense you can see now picking out some of the the silver areas i want on the model so mainly around the ball itself uh on those spikes and also on the um shoulder pad and on the the elbow pads as well instead of having them just as a, a matte black i wanted to, to have them looking a little bit worn like a little bit like they were metal painted black over the top but that black paint's now wearing off a bit so just dry brush a little bit on there and that works really really well and essentially that's pretty much the the uh the goblin complete so we can move on to basing now basing for all of the blood bowl miniatures that i'm currently doing all i'm doing is painting the whole thing with a rhinox hide uh, and then i'm dropping straight over the top of that with um a static grass and i'm just going that throughout really uh, i wanted everyone to look like they're playing on the same pitch i didn't want to do different things with it i know a lot of people do different things with the the basing dependent on which you know where the the team come from but i wanted them all to look exactly the same really with this sort of grassy feel that they're, maybe they're playing on some big tournament and they're all there all together at the same pitch to frame the model there you did see i just popped a little bit of uh, black um contrast black templar just around the base a couple of coats will do nicely uh, do wait for the first coat to dry properly and then pop the second one on there and then you can see i'm popping this static grass on now i'm not using an applicator or anything like that all i'm using is a piece of tweezers um just putting it on there pressing it down with a little bit of pva glue and there you have it that's the model complete and i think he looks absolutely fantastic it looks completely different to anything I, I usually paint you know you look at the the space wolves and um some of the the star wars legion stuff and the other teams the human teams have gone with the very sort of traditional kind of grim darky fantasy feel but i really wanted this to stand out as being really fantastical it's really bright color compared to the rest of the team and i think it works really well especially when you mix it with these different colors for the browns and the tans and things just on, on the actual um strapping on the mini it really makes the blue pop nicely and the green little goblin on the top there looks different because he's standing out from the rest of the model he looks fantastic on his own but thanks for watching guys make sure you do hit that subscribe button hit the like button let me know what you think down below in the comments as well um but otherwise i'll see you in the next one